Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or in short, OCD, is a common and long-lasting mental illness where the person will have frequent obsessive thoughts and compulsive behaviors. Hence, the OCD patients would experience significant problems as their daily life and social interaction are being disrupted significantly. The word obsessive means there is always a persistent, unwanted or unpleasant thought or idea that comes to the mind repetitively and causes feelings of anxiety. Meanwhile, the word compulsiveness means a repetitive behavior that makes you feel the urge to repeat the behavior in response to temporarily relieve those unwanted thoughts. Moving on to the diagnosis and assessment, there are actually three ways to diagnose OCD. One of them is psychological evaluation. In this evaluation, it discusses the patient's thoughts, feelings, symptoms, and behavior methods to determine if they are having obsessions or compulsive behaviors that disrupt their quality of life, or will communicate with their family or friends to know more about them. Next, use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the SM5. And lastly, through the physical exam. The exam is to rule out factors that contribute to their symptoms and to check for any related complications. of OCD, new ground obsessive compulsive skills is used as it is the most widely used tool in assessing the global severity of OCD. It comprises of symptom checklists and severity skills to consecutively rate obsessions and compulsions. The symptom checklist includes 55 common obsession and compulsive behaviors, which are grouped according to the thematic content like contamination and aggression or 
behavioral expressions such as repeated checking and washing. Obsessive and compulsive symptom severity are read separately, both with scores ranging from 0 to 25. With these scores, they are summed up to create a total OCD severity score range from 0 to 50. The severity of symptoms are classified into four classes, which are mild symptoms with score 0 to 13, moderate symptoms 14 to 25, moderate to severe symptoms 26 to 34, and the severe symptoms, which is 35 to 40. Next is the cause and the risk factor. The exact cause that contributes to the occurrence of OCD is unknown. However, there are several risk factors in developing OCD, including gender. Generally, OCD is more common in females as compared to the male. Next, the age. There are some studies which shows that Male is more likely to experience the onset of OCD prior to puberty. Meanwhile, females are more likely to develop OCD in adolescents and in their 20s. Genetics, especially those family members with OCD history. The presence of other mental health conditions or past experiences of traumatic or stressful events especially during their childhood or adolescence, may contribute to the occurrence of OCD as well. Besides, the pregnancy and postpartum. High levels of stress in expectant mothers will have some impacts on the offspring, where it actually increases the risk of the child developing OCD later in life. Extreme stress or OCD during pregnancy may probably pass it down to the unborn child. Therefore, in some cases, pregnancy and birth can trigger OCD. The last risk factor is the drug and alcohol use or misuse. This is considered as one of the controllable risk factors for developing OCD. OCD can be treated and managed through both pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy. For pharmacological management, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors (SSRI) is used as a first-line agent for OCD. Among the SSRIs, fluoxetine, fluvoxamine, paroxetine, and sertraline are approved by FDA to be used for OCD. Meanwhile, escitalopram and citalopram are non-FDA approved SSRI for OCD. SSRI should be continued for 8 to 12 weeks, including 4 to 6 weeks with maximally tolerated doses. If the patient has no response from receiving SSRI, it can be switched to FDA-approved clomipramine, which is a tricyclic antidepressant that is used to treat the symptoms of OCD, or venlafaxine and mirtazapine, which are not yet approved by FDA. If the patient only has partial response from receiving solely SSRI, the treatment may be added with clomipramine or antipsychotics. The choices of medication are similar among adult and children's patients. The only difference is the dosage being prescribed. Another treatment option for OCD patients is psychotherapy. The Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT, that involves the psychoeducation, cognitive therapy, and exposure and response prevention ERP, are considered to be suitable for children and adolescents. Cognitive therapy helps patients to understand that the brain is sending wrong messages. The therapist will help the patient to learn on how they should recognize these messages and respond to them in some new ways. This is to help them to control their obsessions and compulsions. Cognitive therapy for OCD focuses on the experience of negative thoughts. While most people easily dismiss such thoughts, some people have certain beliefs that thoughts are always important. So instead of being able to just forget about these negative thoughts, their beliefs cause them to react differently. Cognitive therapy helps the patients to stand back from these thoughts, look at the evidence closely, and tell themselves something more realistic or accurate. In ERP therapy, People who have OCD are placed in situations where they are gradually exposed to their obsessions and asked not to perform the compulsions 
that usually ease their anxiety and distress. The patients will be asked to describe all their obsessions and compulsions, and the therapist will put them on a list, starting from the things that don't bother them much to the things that are most frightening to them. Next, the therapist will request the patient to face them one by one, according to the list. Usually, it will start from the easiest one. When you are being exposed to that fear repeatedly over a period of time, your anxiety shrinks until it is barely noticeable or even fades entirely. This is because the gradual exposure would help you to make you feel less intense fears when you stop performing the compulsive rituals as your brain learns to control the thoughts before action. This means that the therapist could also help the patient to gain confidence and learn special skills to control the compulsions through cognitive therapy. With the right and early treatment, the patients would often return to normal daily life and activities. Treatment for OCD is either on an outpatient or an inpatient basis. Outpatient treatment is usually sufficient for most OCD patients who are mild to moderately ill and for those who are likely to be adherent to treatment. Patients may be followed up at periodic intervals, initially once in a month or two and subsequently at longer intervals depending upon the response to treatment, tolerability, and side effects. Hospital treatment may be considered for those who are at high suicide risk, dangerous to self or others, and intolerant to side effects. Admission in rehabilitation services may be necessary for some patients who may not have benefited from standard treatments including inpatient care. Patients with OCD should be monitored for psychiatric comorbidities and suicide risk. In their lifetime, 90% of patients with OCD meet criteria for at least one other psychiatric diagnosis. The most common comorbid diagnoses are anxiety disorders, including panic disorder, social phobia, specific phobias, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Comorbidity with depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, substance abuse, or impulse control disorders increases the risk of suicidal behavior. For patients taking SSRI, careful monitoring is needed for adverse effect of SSRI. To achieve optimal response, patients with OCD require a higher dosage of an SSRI compared with other indications. However, the higher than usual maximal doses sometimes may lead to serotonin syndrome. It usually takes at least four to six weeks for patients to note any significant improvement in symptoms, and it may take 10 weeks or longer for some. Moreover, there is a concern for QT prolongation in patients who are taking citalopram. If a higher dosage is needed, the patient should be monitored using electrocardiography and electrolyte measurement. In a nutshell, for OCD patients, it is important to take the medicine at the right dose and the right time. If you forgot to take it or decide to skip a dose, it could set off your symptoms. You are also advised not to miss your doctor follow-up appointments to have a checkup on your OCD progression. Thanks for watching.